There is no shortage of movie cowboys on the silver screen. Some are more believable than others. Gary Cooper, for example, was a great trick rider, and so was Gene Autry. These actors thrived in Hollywood for their authenticity, and audiences loved them for it. Western films of this era thrived on the actor's ability to embody the American cowboy. So much of their persona was tied to their ability to rope, ride, and shoot. In some respects, they were real cowboys who walked the walk and talked the talk. But out of all the movie cowboys to ever clear leather with their six-gun, who was faster than all the others? Alan Ladd. Alan Ladd, known for his remarkable talent both on and off the silver screen, had an interesting journey into Hollywood. His skills were honed under the guidance of Rod Wedwing, a Chickasaw Indian who made his mark in Hollywood alongside Cecil B. DeMille in 1931. Wedwing was not only an actor but also an outstanding exhibition shooter, reminiscent of legends like Annie Oakley and Ed McGivern. It was under Wedwing's tutelage that Ladd flourished, particularly in the realm of westerns. The classic 1953 western Shane stands as a testament to Ladd's prowess, portraying the iconic gunslinger with an unmatched finesse. However, his western repertoire extends beyond Shane. Films like Red Mountain, 1951, The Big Land, 1957, and One Foot in Hell, 1960, showcased Ladd's versatility in bringing complex characters to life against the rugged backdrop of the Wild West. With each role, Ladd demonstrated his ability to capture the essence of the American frontier, earning him a place among the pantheon of Western film legends. Terence Hill Terence Hill's portrayal of Trinity, the iconic gunslinger in films like They Call Me Trinity and Trinity Is Still My Name, brought a refreshing twist to the Western genre. Alongside his brother Bambino, played by Bud Spencer, Trinity embarked on comedic adventures where they defended settlements from gangs and bandits. Despite his laid-back demeanor and penchant for humor, Trinity's skills with a sidearm were often underestimated throughout the films. The Trinity series was renowned for its ability to blend Western elements with comedy, offering a playful take on the popular spaghetti Western tropes of the 1970s. While Trinity's prowess with a gun was not always the main focus of the storyline, his lightning-fast reflexes would invariably come to the forefront during the climactic gunfights. It was in these moments that Trinity, having been dismissed or underestimated throughout the film, would emerge as the unexpected hero, using his sharpshooting abilities to save the day and win the hearts of audiences worldwide. Gregory Peck Gregory Peck renowned for his portrayal of righteous protectors in westerns, rivaled stars like Eastwood in his mastery of the genre. However, in The Gunfighter, Peck took on a different role, portraying Jimmy Ringo, a gunslinger infamous for his quick draw and the enemies it attracted. Constantly hounded by young guns eager to challenge him, Ringo found himself in a perilous struggle to survive while yearning to reunite with his estranged family. As the narrative unfolds, Ringo grapples with his violent past, realizing that he cannot escape it indefinitely. The tension escalates when he faces off against the impetuous young sharpshooter, Hunt Bromley, portrayed by Skip Homier. The final confrontation between the seasoned Ringo and the ambitious Bromley becomes a test of skill, experience, and survival. Ringo must demonstrate why challenging him was a grave mistake, emphasizing the harsh realities of the Wild West and the consequences of recklessness. Audie Murphy Audie Murphy's legacy extends far beyond his illustrious military career. Renowned as one of the most decorated combat soldiers of World War II, Murphy's bravery and valor earned him numerous awards, including the prestigious Medal of Honor. His heroic actions at the young age of 19, during the intense battle at the Colmar Pocket in France, where he single-handedly held off a company of German soldiers before leading a successful counterattack despite being wounded and out of ammunition, exemplified his extraordinary courage and determination. 
Following his military service, Murphy transitioned to a successful career in Hollywood, where he starred in a remarkable 34 credited Western films. Some of his notable Westerns include No Name on the Bullet, 1959, 40 Guns to Apache Pass, 1967, Bullet for a Bad Man, 1964, The Quick Gun, 1964, The Unforgiven, 1960, Night Passage, 1957, and Ride Clear of Diablo, 1954. Murphy's presence on the silver screen captivated audiences as he brought authenticity and depth to his roles, reflecting his own experiences and values. His contributions to the Western genre continue to be celebrated, with his performances leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. Gene Wilder The friendship between Gene Wilder and Cleveland Little during the filming of Blazing Saddles not only added to the camaraderie on set, but also enriched the dynamic performances in the iconic comedy. Little, coming from a background in Broadway, found a mentor in Wilder, who generously shared insights and pointers with him to enhance his portrayal of Eddie. Their collaboration behind the scenes contributed to the authenticity and chemistry of their on-screen interactions. Wilder's profound observation about Blazing Saddles as a satire on racism adds layers to the film's comedic brilliance. By cleverly using humor to confront serious societal issues, the movie broke new ground in the realm of social commentary. Wilder's remark underscores the film's bold approach in addressing racism head-on, challenging stereotypes, and provoking thoughtful reflection, all while delivering laughs. The premiere of Blazing Saddles at the Pickwick Drive-In Theater in Burbank was a memorable event steeped in Western flair. As 250 invited guests, including Cleveland Little and Gene Wilder themselves, arrived on horseback, it added a touch of whimsy and authenticity to the occasion. Watching the film from horseback before it even hit the big screen heightened the anticipation and excitement among the attendees, creating a unique and unforgettable experience. In contrast, the marketing strategy for The Frisco Kid in 1979 appeared to heavily favor Gene Wilder's role over Harrison Ford's supporting role. Despite Ford's recent blockbuster success in Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, this discrepancy in marketing efforts may have overshadowed Ford's contribution to the film, leading to an imbalance in recognition between the two actors. Gene Wilder's revelation about John Wayne being considered for a role eventually played by Harrison Ford sheds light on the behind-the-scenes negotiations in Hollywood. Wayne's interest in the part demonstrated the caliber of talent attracted to the project, yet his decision to turn it down due to financial reasons highlights the complexities of filmmaking and the importance of fair compensation for actors. Glenn Ford Gwilyn Samuel Newton Ford, better known as Glenn Ford, was a highly esteemed Canadian-American actor renowned for his versatility and compelling performances on screen. He earned the moniker the fastest gun in Hollywood, capable of drawing in a mere 0.4 seconds, making him a natural fit for roles like that of George Temple in the film The Fastest Gun Alive. Ford's illustrious career spanned nearly five decades, from the 1940s to the 1980s, during which he left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Born on May 1, 1916, in saint christine d'Auvergne, Quebec, Canada, Ford hailed from humble beginnings. His father, Newton Ford, worked as an engineer for the Canadian Pacific Railway, instilling in Glenn a strong work ethic and a sense of resilience. In 1922, the Ford family relocated to California, where they settled in Santa Monica. Despite the vast difference in climate, Ford adapted quickly to his new surroundings and embraced the opportunities that awaited him in the vibrant entertainment hub of Los Angeles. During his formative years at Santa Monica High School, Ford discovered his passion for acting and honed his skills in drama productions alongside future industry peers like Jameis Griffith. Following his graduation in 1934, Ford Immerced himself in the local theater scene, 
taking on various roles and gaining invaluable experience that would shape his future career trajectory. In addition to pursuing acting, Ford juggled odd jobs to make ends meet, demonstrating his tenacity and determination to succeed in the competitive world of show business. One pivotal moment came when he crossed paths with the renowned entertainer Will Rogers, who imparted invaluable lessons in horsemanship to the aspiring actor. Ford's work ethic and dedication to mastering diverse skills mirrored his father's sage advice, emphasizing the importance of being well-rounded and versatile in one's pursuits. Ford's on-screen persona as the quintessential everyman resonated with audiences, reflecting his ability to portray relatable characters facing extraordinary circumstances. Throughout his career, Ford showcased his range and depth as an actor, earning acclaim for his performances in both westerns and comedies. His portrayal of complex, multifaceted characters garnered him three Golden Globe nominations for Best Actor in Marchin, Picture, Musical, or Comedy, J. Silver Heels. J. Silver Heels, widely recognized for his iconic portrayal of Tonto in The Lone Ranger, was not only a talented actor, but also reputed to be one of the fastest gunslingers in Hollywood. He earned the nickname Silver Hills during a brief stint as a middleweight boxer, showcasing his agility and speed both in and out of the ring. Despite his limited boxing career, Silver Heels left a lasting impression on audiences with his remarkable athleticism and quick reflexes. In addition to his acting prowess, Silver Heels was honored for his contributions to the Western genre, receiving induction into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1993. This prestigious accolade underscored his enduring impact on the entertainment industry, and solidified his status as a beloved figure among Western enthusiasts. Throughout his illustrious career, Silverheels amassed an impressive list of credited Western films, showcasing his versatility and range as an actor. From classics like The Lone Ranger in 1956 to The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing in 1973, Silverheels captivated audiences with his compelling performances and charismatic presence on screen. Jerry Lewis Jerry Lewis, renowned for his comedic genius, might come as a surprise when discussing fast gunslingers in Western films. However, rumors suggest that Lewis possessed impressive speed with a six-shooter, despite his limited ventures into the Western genre. His sole Western film venture was alongside Dean Martin in 1956, titled Sons of Former Ranch Partner. In this unexpected role, Lewis portrayed a character raised by his millionaire mother who embarks on a journey to the Wild West to learn the ways of a cowboy from Martin's character. The plot unfolds as they encounter financial troubles at the ranch where Martin serves as a foreman. With Lewis's assistance, they confront the challenges head-on, showcasing the comedic duo's trademark antics amidst the rugged backdrop of the Western frontier. Interestingly, the film's release coincided with a significant milestone in Martin and Lewis's partnership. On the same day the movie premiered in theaters, the iconic duo made their final appearance together as a team at New York's Coco Cabana. This historic event marked the end of an era in comedy and signaled a new chapter for both performers. Despite Lewis's limited foray into Western cinema, his comedic timing and on-screen charisma added a unique flair to the genre. While he may not have been a traditional gunslinger, his portrayal in Sons of Former Ranch Partner offered audiences a refreshing and entertaining take on the classic Western narrative. Dean Martin's presence in the film also added to its allure, as it marked his first venture into the Western genre. The chemistry between Martin and Lewis, combined with their comedic prowess, ensured that their final collaboration left a lasting impression on audiences and remains a cherished moment in cinematic history. Kirk Douglas Kirk Douglas 
a legendary figure in Hollywood, was not just renowned for his acting prowess, but also for his portrayal of quick-draw gunslingers in Western films. With a career spanning decades, Douglas left an indelible mark on the genre, earning him a reputation as one of the fastest guns in Hollywood. Despite his diverse range of roles, Douglas's affinity for Westerns was evident, with a total of 18 credits to his name in the genre. Among his notable Western films are Along the Great Divide, 1951, Gunfight at the OK Corral, 1957, The Way West, 1967, The War Wagon, 1967, A Gunfight, 1971, and Draw, 1982. Each of these films showcased Douglas's versatility as an actor, as well as his ability to convincingly portray rugged and determined characters navigating the untamed frontier. While Douglas's reputation as a quick-draw gunslinger may not come as a surprise to many, his dedication to his craft and his ability to bring authenticity to his Western roles set him apart in the industry. His performances captivated audiences and cemented his status as a true Hollywood icon. Sergio Leone Sergio Leone, the acclaimed Italian filmmaker, is often hailed as a master of the Western genre, known for his iconic contributions to the cinematic world. Despite not being a gunslinger by trade, Leone's keen eye for detail and his passion for storytelling propelled him to greatness in the realm of Western filmmaking. Leone's journey into the world of Westerns began with his film debut in High Noon, 1952 where he made a memorable appearance in the opening pre-title shots. This marked the beginning of his exploration of the Wild West on screen, a theme that would become synonymous with his name. What set Leone apart was not just his directorial prowess, but also his unique vision and artistic flair. He brought a fresh perspective to the genre, infusing it with gritty realism and larger-than-life characters. His breakthrough came with for a Few Dollars More, 1965, a film that catapulted him to superstardom in Europe and reignited his career in the United States. Leone's films were characterized by their epic scope, breathtaking cinematography, and unforgettable scores. With each new project, he pushed the boundaries of what was possible in Western cinema, creating timeless classics that continue to captivate audiences to this day. Among Leone's notable works in the Western genre are Treasure of Ruby Hills, 1955, Raiders of Old California, 1957, For a Few Dollars More, 1965, The Big Gun Down, 1967, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, 1966, and Death Rides a Horse, 1967. These films showcase Leone's mastery of storytelling and his ability to transport viewers to a bygone era of lawlessness and adventure. Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr., the legendary entertainer known for his multifaceted talents, had an unexpected yet impressive skill hidden up his sleeve. Quick draw prowess. According to Bob Munden, widely regarded as the fastest gun who ever lived, Davis was the second fastest draw in Hollywood, surpassed only by Jerry Lewis. This revelation sheds light on yet another facet of Davis's remarkable versatility and showmanship. Davis's proficiency with a six-shooter was not just hearsay. It was demonstrated on television when he appeared on The Mike Douglas Show in 1961. During the show, Davis showcased his lightning-fast draw, leaving audiences and fellow entertainers in awe of his dexterity and precision. As a gesture of admiration for his fellow performer, Davis presented a customized Colt Peacemaker to another guest, Johnny London, as a token of recognition for his own quick draw skills. Despite primarily being known for his talents as a singer, dancer, and actor, Davis also left his mark on the Western genre with notable appearances in various television series and films. Some of his Western roles included appearances in Sergeants 3, 1962, The Rifleman, 1962, and Lawman, 1962, showcasing his versatility as an entertainer who could seamlessly transition between different genres and mediums. Charles Bronson Charles Bronson, 
celebrated as one of the fastest actors with a gun in westerns, made a significant mark in the realm of action films with his formidable presence and rugged physique. Born into poverty in Ehrenfeld, Pennsylvania, a coal mining town nestled in the Allegheny Mountains, Bronson faced early hardships following the death of his minor father during his youth. To support himself, Bronson toiled in the mines before enlisting in the United States Army Air Forces in 1943 to serve in World War II. Following his military service, Bronson embarked on a new journey, joining a theatrical troupe where he honed his craft in acting. Throughout the 1950s, he showcased his talent in a variety of supporting roles in both film and television, often portraying compelling characters in anthology drama TV series. As the decade drew to a close, Bronson secured his first major cinematic lead in the crime drama Machine Gun Kelly, 1958. Bronson's career gained momentum with notable co-starring roles in acclaimed films such as The Magnificent Seven, 1960, The Great Escape, 1963, This Property is Condemned, 1966, and The Dirty Dozen, 1967. His commanding presence and versatile performances solidified his status as a leading figure in Hollywood, leaving an enduring legacy in the realm of action cinema. Jamie Foxx. When discussing the fastest guns in cinema, Jamie Foxx's portrayal of Django in Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained cannot be overlooked. In the film, Django embarks on a determined quest to reunite with his wife, who has been separated from him by the brutal slave trade. Guided by the sophisticated Dr. King Schultz, played by Christoph Waltz, Django undergoes rigorous training in marksmanship, equipping himself with the skills necessary to confront the plantation where his beloved spouse is held captive. Although Tarantino infuses elements of revisionist history to craft a satisfying conclusion, the spectacle of Django effortlessly dispatching numerous adversaries on his journey to rescue his true love remains a standout feature of this captivating postmodern Western. Jamie Foxx's portrayal of the determined and lethal gunslinger adds depth and intensity to the character, making Django unchained an exhilarating and memorable cinematic experience. Randolph Scott, Randolph Scott, known for his portrayals of towering heroes, takes on the role of Ben Brigade in Ride Lonesome, showcasing a character with a touch more ruggedness. In this Western tale, Brigade, a renowned bounty hunter, sets out on a perilous journey to deliver wanted murderer Billy John, played by James Best, to Santa Cruz for his impending hanging. However, the treacherous terrain they must traverse poses numerous challenges along the way. Initially motivated solely by the bounty reward, Brigade's demeanor suggests a single-minded focus on monetary gain. Yet, as the journey unfolds, unexpected twists and violent encounters force Brigade to confront his own principles and values. When faced with danger, he demonstrates his prowess with a firearm, making it clear to Billy John why crossing paths with him is ill-advised. Ride Lonesome presents Randolph Scott in a nuanced role, portraying a character who navigates the complexities of morality and duty amidst the unforgiving backdrop of the Wild West. As Ben Brigade, Scott delivers a performance that captures the essence of a rugged frontier lawman, adept at both confronting danger and upholding justice in the face of adversity. In exploring the legacy of these fastest actors with a gun in westerns, it's evident that their contributions have left an indelible mark on the genre. Who do you believe deserves the title of the fastest gun actor in the West? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more captivating content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.